Asimati and Roger's recent victory in Australia is part of a rousing two years on the championship circuit that's seen them rise from 213th in the world to a place in the top 12. Hello, sailors. Hi. When I was told I was coming sailing with you guys today, I'd imagined this boat was going to be a lot bigger. It's quite small. Yeah, no, th this is the boat that we race. It's, uh, it's called the Olympic 470. It's 4.7 meters long. It's the Olympic two-man boat. In this kind of breeze, when it's blowing, we need to keep the front of the boat off the water to reduce drag. That's all the technical side of Olympic sailing and high performance sailing. You want to always optimize everything as much as you can. Well, I hope you're ready for a third skipper. I'm all ready. Uh, you're going to need to get rid of those heels and that jacket for sure. And we're going to put you in some technical gear, uh, try and keep you a little bit dry and warm while we're out there. Here in Simonstown is where Asanati went from novice to under 18 national champion. Apparently, it also produces sumo wrestlers. Whoa, 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 just a minute. I know that you guys are Olympians and all, but why did I get the fat suit? Well, what we've done is we put you in a wetsuit like we've got underneath, and we put the Gore-Tex on top, because we don't want to take any chances with you. It's going to be pretty wet and crazy out there. We want to make but sure I've you're going to be I've got a life jacket and all this is so heavy. How do I know I'm not going to drown out there? We've got you your own little custom trapeze harness. And uh, What's it for? you're going to hook onto the wire and uh, do a little bit of high wiring at high speed once we're out there in the breeze. Am I able to do that on day one? I think we're going to find out. The Cape Coast is one of sailing's windier venues, and Asalati and Roger sometimes train in conditions of up to 65 kilometers an hour. Though they have the advantage of being big breeze sailors, championships are fought in any weather. Out on a limb, every second of the race, it's an exhilarating sport, but just as punishing too. I must be honest, I've got no idea why they call it plain sailing, because that wasn't easy, that was so hard. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much what it's like. I guess we had, the only difference is we normally have 30 or 40 other boats really close to us in the race, you know, so, but that's, that's how it is out there. I was really impressed with the high speeds you did get to though. Yeah, we, that wasn't the high speed as we, what we normally do. Because there were three of us in the boat, and there's a bit of weight inside the boat, but there's one, there's two, and then the, you can really see the boat plainly. I don't weigh that much. <laughs> yeah, still, like every every kilo counts. <laughs> Asadati tells it like it is, as does the harbour's SA Navy Museum, which charts our sailing history back to the 18th century. But this boat is so beautiful and adds to that romance and nostalgia of sailing. That's why I love sailing. Where did you guys develop your love for sailing? My father was a, a very competitive um, and uh, successful sailor and uh, he competed at the 92 Olympics in Barcelona. So the passion developed through my dad and his connection with sailing and it's kind of grown from there. I stayed with my grandfather in Eastern Cape in Fort Beaufort. I moved to Western Cape in 2002, in June, for school holidays with my mom. And uh, my friends and cousin were sailing, and uh, they asked me to come join them for a day. We went out and it was windy. I just enjoyed it. The, the feeling you get when the wind is strong and the boat is planing on the water is so incredible. End of my school holidays in June. The following year, beginning of 2003, I, I moved to Cape Town. Since you guys look like you can handle many challenges, we'll see if you can handle my games. The Genie Olympic Games. Okay. <laughs> oh, we love a challenge. <laughs> Let's go. They first competed individually. In joining forces, they complement each other's strengths, as well as developing the fast, intuitive, problem-solving techniques you need on the water. Meet Victory. Now, Victory was Lord Horatio Nelson's flagship boat, and he actually won the Battle of Trafalgar with this boat. This block, which is whew, way over 100 years old, was actually used on a ship like this. What was it used for? That's your first challenge. Go for it. Mm. Okay. We don't have these on our boats anymore. But this looks like, I'd say a rope goes through here. Yeah. This is like a very old version of a cleat that cleats a rope when you pull those down and stops the rope from moving. Yes, you got it. This one in particular is called a snatch block. Same sort of thing, only these days it's made out of carbon fiber and a bit of titanium. <laughs> well, well done. Task one of the Gene Olympics is complete. <laughs>
the fun almost never was when Asanati nearly dropped out of school for a hundred brand a day job in construction. Yet his talent as a sailor saved the day. So everybody knows that sailors are really good at tying knots and bows. So I'm going to get you to tie the bowline. The bowline is like the most common knot. We have them use them all over the boat and uh, it's the strongest. It's the one they always say you can trust a man's life with. Uh, we've got no problem with tying a bowline. So now you've got to do it behind your back. Your challenge starts now. Go! Okay. That was like two seconds. Is this really the knot that they say a man's life depends on? Yeah, that's the one. When you're in the water? Yeah. But... That's crazy. You guys must trust each other immensely to be able to work as such a team. Well, we have to. You saw Eddie this morning how Roger was hanging out of the wire. So if he doesn't trust me, then there's a big chance that I might drop him in water or injure him in many ways. When you go through victories and defeats and great moments and terrible moments together over the years, day in, day out, you end up developing a real brotherhood and a real trust. And you know, it's a, it's a real gift for us to be in this situation. During the first week of August, they're in France for the next leg of the World Championships. It's all part of the process of heading for gold at the 2016 Rio Olympics. I'm glad we didn't have to go train in this boat. They look heavy. Yeah, I don't think we'll be winning any Olympic medals with this boat. I think you guys could have cut it in the old days. <laughs> <laughs> to think of it, I like you guys just the way you are. Now how about we bring home some more medals? Yeah. yeah.